2024. I am Abby Broughton, a member of the class of 2023. I'm originally from North Dakota, which is where I'm at now. I journeyed down to Omaha last year to begin dental school and had a whirlwind, but great first year. I'm the pre-dental officer for the American Student Dental Association chapter at Creighton. And I know you're not pre-dentals anymore, you're full-on dental students as you're incoming. Uh, D1s, but I just thought that it would be helpful to kind of throw out some answers here from my experiences that I had the first year. First off, thank you so much for submitting all of the questions. I'm more than happy to answer what I can. I went through all the questions, combined the ones that were very similar, and kind of made it more comprehensive, and I've broken it down to a few categories. So I'll go through, I have my iPad here for reference, but I'll go through um, some class questions, living questions, dress code, uh, questions, technology questions, lunch and workout, extracurriculars, and transportation. So those are all the categories. The ones that um, are upcoming answers that will be posted in probably a coming video would be finances, advice, um, and then stuff about adjustment, best way to handle course load, and then like outside the classroom. So I'm going to get some input from other officers on those. I want to start off with a slight disclaimer. So due to COVID-19, all as with the rest of the world, so much is changing with higher education. And so all of these questions, please take with a grain of salt. So I'll be answering them from the standpoint of if everything was back to normal by fall, which who knows if it will be, likely it couldn't be. So just err on the side of caution when making decisions about anything that I might say and just realize that things will likely look a lot different than how they have in the past. But for you, the benefit is you'll have known no different being an incoming student. So the first category is class. And the question, are all lectures recorded? So most of the lectures are recorded by the professors, although we are expected to be in class for um, nearly all lectures. And that's just a policy put in place to help us to um, stay on top of the material, stay accountable, and kind of practice for when we're dental professionals so that we know how to show up every day. Um, and then the benefit of having all the lectures recorded is that you can go back and watch them, you can speed it up to two times speed, and then study from that or get any notes that you may have missed, or especially if you're an auditory learner. Next question, are the professors chill or are they old and strict? So based off of my experience, it seems like pretty comparable to undergrad. You'll have a wide mix of personalities, just like in the real world, um, and so everyone will kind of run classes differently, but they'll all set expectations of how we're supposed to um, perform well in their course. I could say a common thread that's running through all the faculty is that they truly want us to succeed. So they want us to learn the material fully. It doesn't mean they'll be easy on us, but they definitely do have a lot of passion and desire for us to become the best dental professionals that we can be. And then also on this line, there's a tutoring program um, where upperclassmen who have done well in the course and are doing well in dental school will meet with freshman students um, to kind of help give some study ideas or to uh, help to learn the material better so that a student can get back on track. And so this is for, you have to meet certain qualifications to qualify for the tutoring program, but it's nice to know that it is there if it's needed. The third question, do most students buy all of the required textbook or is it more like undergrad where unnecessary textbooks can be rented or shared between classmates? Do you get a GPA? Yep, you get a GPA just like in undergrad. So most of the um, there are little nuances between different grading scales of didactic, the science classes, and then with the clinical dental classes, but for most of the most part, um, most classes are graded. There are a couple that are pass-fail, but those are usually ones where it's just focused on completion. The next one, how many people are in each classroom?
Have you ever had classes canceled for a snow day? It seems like different years vary. Sometimes you'll have no snow days, sometimes you'll have up to five or so. So it just really depends on how the weather is and what is needed for everyone's safety and how quickly the plows can get out on the road. I will say when we had our snow day this year, the professor still published the lectures online and we just did school from home. So it wasn't quite as fun of a snow day as you may have expected. Can you explain the testing schedule? So each professor comes out with their own course syllabus of when each of the classes meet and then each of the exams. Oftentimes the class will have maybe three to four exams um, with the last one counting as the final. And then if there are some weeks that are busy and double up and there's multiple exams, the, the class president can try to work out, out with the instructors to get something moved. So that's pretty nice to make sure that the exams are spread out. So if you have four one week and none the next, maybe you could get it spread so that it's two and two. The next category is living. Where to live if you don't want a car and living recommendations. So Creighton has an off-campus housing website. I'll actually link a lot of these below. Um, there's also Zillow, Hotbeds, Trulia, Apartments.com. Just if you can get online and Google, um, there's lots of them. And I'm sure during this time, uh, property management companies would be offering online uh, FaceTime tours or something to rent something. So specifically the Muse, it's still under construction, but it's in the dental school parking lot. So it's super close, it is an option some students live in and then the Atlas is another popular one. There's a bridge that connects it to the, um, to the main campus. So those are two apartment complexes that are very nearby. For dog owners, is it manageable to have a dog in your first year? Some of my classmates have dogs and seem to love it. It is another added layer of responsibility. So I think each person can just make that choice one by one. Um, next question, what's the best area to live in? So some of the if you want to use these terms when you're Googling where to live, downtown is close, Midtown, Blackstone um, are some of the neighborhoods across the river in Council Bluffs. There's some apartment complexes. And then if you're concerned about safety of an area or not really knowing what it's like, you can check the Omaha crime heat mapping if you're concerned at all about safety in an area. Should I bring any winter gear? Yes. So it will snow inevitably in the winter months. So in, for example, in January, I looked this up, the average low is 14 and high is 33. So winter jacket, boots, hats, and gloves and mittens are some essentials for staying safe and warm in the winter. Next up, is there a dress code? So yes, there is a dress code. Dress code is to be worn whenever in the building and patients are around, so 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then I'll put that link in the description below. So dress code update, there have been no changes to the dress code, it gets reviewed um, most every year from my knowledge, um, but there wasn't any changes that were needed to be made this year. So first off, starting for females, what is exactly required of female students? Can we see examples? So dress pants and a top and then long hair to be tied up when in labs. Women's shoes that are comfy and work with a dress code. So um, people will wear dress shoes or a type of athletic shoes that are clean. Um, men wear socks, women wear nylons or socks with their shoes. If the pants are ankle length when you sit down and they ride up, nylons should cover any of the exposed skin. Are we allowed to wear dresses or skirts? How about colored jeans? And so this is what I found in the dress code. Uh, only full length dress slacks are acceptable. Jeans, leggings, capri pants, skirts, and shorts are not acceptable. How strict is the dress code? This is what the policy says. Compliance with the dress and appearance standards will be monitored by the faculty. Students who not, do not exhibit proper professional appearance will be privately informed by the faculty member why their appearance is inappropriate. Students who have been informed more than once of the inappropriate dress or appearance will be referred to the appropriate administrator. So this is um, basically saying just follow the dress code. It's not that hard and actually you just get into a routine and people, lots of people end up liking it to know, okay, this is exactly what I need to wear to school today. And what is a typical dress code for male students? It says facial hair, all facial hair must be neatly trimmed, closely cropped beards must exhibit a clearly trimmed next corner, and then collared shirts. And 
one fun thing is that actually on Fridays the alumni generously have gifted us polos um, in the past, so hopefully they'll do that for your class as well. And then uh, people wear these polos on Fridays, which is kind of a nice break from ties and the normal dress code. May we wear scrubs if we choose, and if so, what color? So scrubs are a no-go except for some oral surgery situations at the Creighton Dental School. Should I go buy a whole new wardrobe for dress code? So I found it helpful to come into school with a few outfits that would work and pieces that I could mix and match, but then go from there and kind of see what I like to wear or what other people are wearing, and then that was helpful with the um, knowing what to buy and get, getting some ideas from that. So it's kind of hard to predict exactly what you'll like um, for a dress code. Moving on to the next category, technology. So first I'll talk about laptops and then about tablets. And what laptop did you get slash do you recommend? So some information will be probably sent out about the minimum technology requirements, just so all the software will work on your um, laptop. But many students use the laptop that they already have from undergrad or their personal life. Does Mac or Windows work better with the school software? Both seem to work well, so it comes down to personal preference slash whatever you already have. Would a bigger screen laptop be more helpful? So some people like the bigger screen laptop, again, that's per personal preference. Personally, I bought an external monitor for pretty cheap off of my Amazon, and then I just hook that up uh, when I'm at home so I can have my laptop and then the external monitor if I'm needing to do some sort of big project. So I guess you can kind of choose whatever size you prefer. Tablets. What do most students at Creighton use for taking notes? If many students use it tablet slash iPad, which version and how much storage is recommended? So lots of people have ended up getting iPads even if they didn't start out the year with one. So the professors either will pass out printed packets in the past, and who knows if these classes will be in person, or if they'll keep printing out note packets um, for each lecture, and then they would post their PowerPoints online that they were going to go over. So personally, I was a paper girl for a semester, but then I realized the sheer volume of paper that I was having to carry around with me all the time. So I got to a iPad, and I actually really love it. So now that I've discovered the iPad world, I don't think I could go back. There's two apps. One is called Notability, and one is called GoodNotes. Those are both popular that students use. You can record the lecture over and then write on the notes nicely. I got the basic iPad, the third generation, I think it was on sale for 200 some dollars at Target and it works just fine with the lowest amount of storage because all the notes I just back up to Google Drive online and so I think that's kind of the way things are going with cloud services. And is there any technology you suggest buying? Do you use iPads over laptops? So laptops are necessary for testing for our exams and the exam software and then histology labs as well. And then iPads are good for notes and just referencing things quickly. So I think there's pros and cons to both of them. Any school supplies you feel are extra helpful? I found my iPad and Apple Pencil to be really helpful for um, going through all of the material and then plus a bag that you can take to school to help you stay organized. So next up, this category is lunch. And says, how long is our lunch period and when are our options at the campus? So lunch is typically an hour, long break between lectures, and then for options, we have a vending machine set up, um, slash mini market where there's some refrigerators that have sandwiches and salads, a uh, few options of that, and then also some beverages and snacks. Or if you want to go off campus, there's a McDonald's right across the street and a subway. And then on campus, on the main undergrad campus, there's a few options in the Union, but um, that's kind of a walk, so not many people go there. What do students usually do for lunch? So there are plenty of refrigerators and microwaves that people use to store their food, and so oftentimes people will bring the food. Personally, I got into the habit of meal prepping, which I really liked. So I would make all my meals on the weekends, package them into individual containers, and then in the morning I would just grab out a meal each day. So it made it pretty easy and made good use of my time so that I would have healthy lunches each day. Do you get hungry during the day? There's usually a 10 minute break between each 15 minute lecture and then someone could grab a snack if they needed to 
during the day um, to kind of get their focus up or people will grab a coffee or make themselves tea or something just to kind of entertain themselves and get, get their focus back up. I'll tell you two more categories after this one. A workout. Is there any exercise place on campus? So there are actually two exercise places. One is the Hewitt Fitness Center and this is the big gym that has a sauna, basketball courts, tennis court, volleyball court, squash court, racquetball court, group fitness classes, a running track, and then cardio machines and a weight room. This one can get busy quite often, but it does have lots of amenities. I'll link the link for that below so that you can kind of view exactly what goes on at that gym, and they have pretty extended hours. They're open quite a bit. But since that is a gym, high traffic area, high touch area, who knows what that will look like, but that was what was previously there. And then there's a gym called the Rasmussen, which is very close by the dental school, only about two blocks away, and that has a weight room, cardio room, and a running track, and soccer fields, and locker rooms. So that's a good close option. It's usually quite a bit less busy, but it also has more limited hours. Do you have access to Creighton's gym for free? So yes, the gyms are included in our student fees. There are options for family and spouse memberships too for an added fee if that's something you're interested in. Do you have time to work out slash when? So some go in the mornings to kickstart their day, others will go right after class to kind of provide a transition between the day of classes and then studying in the evening. Um, there's also people will go late at night right before bed, so it really depends on what your schedule is. Um, kind of person you are. How many intramural sports are there? So there's lots of intramurals. There's flag football, volleyball, basketball, and more. Lots of times dental school classmates will put together teams and then play and that, so that's quite a fun thing. Um, and I'm pretty sure that there's some sort of grad student division. The next category is extracurriculars. Are there any clubs to join? Yes, there's an American Dental Student Association, which everyone is automatically a member of. There's, um, and then there's meetings, these things called lunch and learns, where they would bring in a speaker and then the speaker would provide lunch. We would listen to their speech over a lunch hour. And then there's conferences and events. Also the Hispanic Dental Association, Women in Dentistry, Faith-Based Dentistry, Special Needs Dentistry Club, Oral Surgery, and many more. The officers of those clubs will send out emails to our great email, and then um, you get info on how to join and show up to the meetings if you're interested. Now, are there social events, conferences, or fun extracurriculars that D1s can look forward to getting involved with? So there are these things called FACS, which are stand for Friday after class, so they happen on Fridays after class, and each um, class will take turns hosting, and it's usually at a restaurant or a bar, and then they will subsidize, pay for some of the food so that there's some free food and free drinks and then um, they'll get discounts. So it's just a good way to get to meet other people in upper classes. Um, and then also there's this hay rack, which is a hay ride that goes on in the fall. And then dental prom, which is put on by ASDA and it's a huge hit in the spring. So those are a few of the events. There's many more that happen. Um, there's also a golf tournament, a 5K, but again, Keep in mind, these will probably all be modified in some sort. Then how prominent is Catholicism in your dental school experience? So being that it is a Jesuit university, lots of the administration make um, decisions based off of this and following the morals and ideals of the Jesuits. And so it can be as much or as little as a person wants. There's a chapel on the second floor of the dental school and there's mass offered every Wednesday at noon is how it was in the past. And then there's also a church on the main campus called St. John's. If you're coming into school and you're a practicing Catholic, there's plenty of opportunities to get involved with your faith. Um, there's also some theology on tap events. So if you come from a different faith background, there's zero issues with that. So many students do. And there's different ways that you can practice your faith within the community um, that you so choose. Transportation. How much is parking per semester? So there should be emails going out about that. Is it easy to get a spot of parking near school or should I buy the pass? So there are different um, two lots that dental students can park on and that's plenty of space. But there's also you can just park along the streets for free and most of the streets are um, pretty 
decently um, safe -ish and low traffic. I haven't heard of people getting broken into. And I'm familiar that dental students have their own parking lot, but do dental students have an assigned parking spot, or is it more convenient to take the Creighton shuttle or public city bus to class every morning? It's a good question, very loaded. Um, some students take the shuttle, although it doesn't drop right after at the school, you'd still need to walk a couple blocks. Um, public city bus, I haven't heard of that, but I'm sure people utilize that. Is it easy to get a spot near the school? You can park on the streets near the school, which is reasonably safe. I haven't heard of anything bad happening. If a person gets there at least an hour before school, maybe to study or they have something going on, then they for sure will have a spot. And then if you get there, say, 10 minutes before class starts at 8 a.m., then you may have to park just a little further away. So I've never had to walk more than two and a half blocks. And truthfully, that exercise probably isn't that bad for me. Do people bike to school? Yep, some people bike to school. Would you recommend a four-wheel drive vehicle? So it probably wouldn't hurt, but I don't, I don't think it's necessary. It would be nice on some winter days. How do most students get to school every morning? I'd say lots of people drive, but some people will walk or bike if close enough. And so I would just encourage you, if you want, you could go on and take kind of a virtual tour of campus and of um, the surrounding areas. You can go on Google Maps and then do the street view and take a look at that if you're interested. We've made it to the end of part one of this Q&A series. So I just want to thank you all again for submitting your questions and I'm excited to meet you as part of the class of 2024. I remember last year sitting here in North Dakota, just confused and kind of excited, confused with anticipation though of what was the excitement that was to come. So I hope that some of these answers can provide at least a little clarity in this time of uncertainty for you. Just rest assured that we are more than excited to meet you at Creighton School of Dentistry and to welcome you into the big Creighton Dental family. There will be many times of uncertainty to come, but I just encourage you to stay positive and to stay flexible as there's nothing that any of us can do to control anything. So it's in God's hands and we'll just leave it there. I look forward to meeting you all coming up whether that's in person or virtually. Stay tuned for more info and have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.